All right, everyone, we got JLD here in the house, and we're just going to chat sports. So I'd love to hear what was your non-professional athletic career like, or maybe you had a professional one that I don't know about. Oh, man, I love this topic. I didn't really know what we were going to be talking about here today. So what a treat to talk sports because, you know, I like talking business, but, you know, I talk about that all day, every day. Sports is definitely kind of like a side passion of mine. Um, I grew up very athletic. Um, I, I really love sports. My dad was pretty athletic growing up. I mean, he was a, he was a swimmer uh, at Georgetown, so Division One athlete. Um, he was a Golden Glove boxer. Um, he, was, he was pretty athletic growing up, but in kind of like, the, I don't want to call them like, you know, um, niche sports, but not like the big mainstream sports, so to speak. And for whatever reason, like he made the decision that like my son's going to be like in the big sports, like the more, you know, like kind of normal sports. And so I started off um, at a very young age, very young, playing baseball basketball and soccer. Those are my three sports. And um, I think like, you know, first, second grade is when I was really thrown into like teams and games and growing up in that. And I um, developed quite well. I was, I was always quite athletic. Um, and so that always helped. I was like, you know, always one of the faster kids in my class and could usually throw the ball harder and further and, um, you know, get on the basketball court. I was pretty agile and same with soccer and my speed helped me there a lot. So for all three sports, I definitely did excel um, at younger ages, um, specifically elementary school. And then junior high is kind of the differentiator where a lot of, um, you know, the, the, the elementary schools come in and they come into, at least where I'm from, it was six um, elementary schools coming into one junior high school. But now you just have one basketball team instead of six, you know, one soccer team instead of six. So now the competition steps up. Um, I was able to still be the top of that athletically for all three of those sports. And so I, I really had a fun time in seventh and eighth grade for our junior high um, playing those sports, all three of them, very active and, and had a really great time. When I got to high school, that's when things got a little bit more competitive because now you're taking four grades and you're smushing them into like one varsity sport. And just to be honest, I just couldn't hack it anymore in baseball. That was kind of one sport that I just kind of dropped off on. I just wasn't able to kind of make the transition, um, unfortunately. But the more kind of athletic sports, basketball and soccer, I was still able to thrive in. So I was a uh, four-year starter on my varsity soccer team, a three-year starting point guard for my basketball team. And what was kind of interesting as a side note before I pass it back over to you, Ashley, is uh, my senior year of basketball was supposed to be like, you know, my best year. I was actually predicted to be all state in the state of Maine and was looking forward to it. But I, I developed patella tendonitis in both knees, unfortunately. So um, I had to step away from the basketball court and then I ended up following my father into swimming because that's really great when you have patella tendonitis is not you know pounding for your knees and so I joined the swim team and you know I grew up on a lake so I was always swimming and um, my dad you know was always kind of like there actively teaching me how to swim and do flip turns and stuff like that because that was his sport in college so I picked it up pretty quick and um, wasn't very good the first few meets but I like rapidly improved um, over my senior year of swimming. And by the end, I actually won the States in the 50 yard freestyle. So that was kind of my accomplishment for uh, the time. And that was my high school career. And then just really quickly, I'll wrap it up by saying I went to Providence college in Rhode Island, which is big East uh, sports division one. Um, I am not a division one caliber athlete in the sports that I played. So I uh, didn't even, you know, have a chance there, which I was fine with because I was looking more forward to kind of like hanging out, having fun. But I did take intramural sports very seriously. I was on, you know, flag football, indoor soccer, basketball. So I did all the sports, um, mostly for fun. And overall, it was a great kind of way to wrap up my quote unquote athletic career in college focusing on intramural sports. And fast forward to today where I'm 40 years old, you know, I was kind of looking for that next sport that I could play into my potentially 70s and 80s. And I'm just, I've never liked golf. I just am not a golfer. Tennis was just a sport that's just kind of too big for me as far as like how, having to run and learn how to serve. Um, so I have picked up pickleball and I'm obsessed. That is awesome. That is really Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, and I'm curious what you think playing sports all throughout your childhood into those formative years, going through injury, how do you feel like that shaped who you are today and any success you have in your career? The biggest thing that I take away from my, like looking back on my sports career is 
the ability to lose and to fail and then to come back and to, to try again. Cause you know, that's the thing is like, I, I actually went to a high school that, um, you know, we just weren't that good in sports, you know, compared to the people that were in our league. Like we were kind of always in the bottom 25%, like win, win loss wise. And it was just, you know, having to, you know, be three and 15 or, you know, five and 13 records and just like, you know, like losing way more than you're winning, but still having to, you know, go to practice five days a week and get back up and go to the game, even though, you know, the other team's so much better than you and losing and getting beat down and sometimes just being dominated, but then getting up and doing it again. And to me, that's translated so well with it, with entrepreneurship of just like, man, like, obviously I'm going to lose, like I'm going to lose more than I win, but how sweet does it feel when you win? And sometimes, and this is more true in entrepreneurship than sports, is you can lose a hundred times in business and entrepreneurship in a row, but then you win 101 time on the 101st time, and that can be everything for you. Like you look to me, like in sports, you'll be one in 101 and that record sucks. But in business, you might be a billionaire or a millionaire or a, a six figure a year earner. And that's what happened to me was like, I had a lot of you know early failures in my 20s and early 30s, but then I just absolutely smashed it back in 2012 with my idea and then launch of Entrepreneurs on Fire, and that's made me a multimillionaire. And that was my one, that was my first and number one win that I had, and it was because of sports teaching me to get back up and swing again that I was able to keep that you know happening over and over again. So that's to me the biggest thing. Yeah, because even in those no's, you're still refining yourself as a person, as an entrepreneur, exactly. athlete, you know, just to keep going. So, yeah, even to look back a year into entrepreneurship, I'd say, like, where I started to where I am now, it's just like, oh, my gosh, I've learned so much, but we still got so far to go. So it's really cool to hear that. What were your sports? Uh, so I played soccer and basketball, and I did one season of golf at um, in high school, but that was kind of a joke. I just, uh, you know, <laughs> that's actually one thing that I, I said for many years. I'm like, I wish, cause I, my, um, was that a spring sport golf? I think was spring. Cause I wasn't, again, I didn't play baseball. So I was like, I kind of wish I played golf in high school. Um, just cause I would have gotten decent. I feel like, and then I maybe would have translated in, but like, because I never played, like I've just never given myself a chance to get good at golf. And that's why it's annoying. But at the end of the day, it's just not my sport. Like I just like, I love pickleball because it's like still active and you get to like, you know, do spikes and you have a teammate and all this stuff. And you're not like committing four hours to like a golf course. And again, people love it. I get it. It's not me. So uh, yeah, random. Random. Did you ever do curling? Do they have curling up in Maine? Like no curling in Maine. Like I know that sports becomes so big. Are you in Canada? No, no. I'm in, I'm right now in North Carolina, but I uh, love to do that one day. Yeah, because I know it's huge in Canada, and of course, it's gotten really big in some northern states. And you know, like it's in the Olympics now, and it's like it's crazy to see. Yeah, it's fun well, to watch. I love. Yeah, same, same, same. I mean, just the the precision is just so cool. Yeah. Uh, the so I know because you've built such an incredible community for entrepreneurs, um, and I wonder if that was triggered at all through, you know, seeing what sports can do in a community or like building a team. Is there any? any relation to like team sports that you played into, yeah, I see the value of community. hundred percent. And I'll probably maybe even focus on team for a little bit more um, right now, because like when I, you're in basketball, it's like, you know, you need to have the point guard and that person's like handling the ball, making the passes, running the offense, but you know, then you can't just have five point guards. Like you need to have a center who's hopefully taller, getting some rebounds. You need to have somebody who's a really good shooter, knocking down the shots. So if like you have these like position players that are all having to kind of fill different roles. And like for me, when I first launched Entrepreneurs on Fire, I was like, I need to find people that can fill those roles. Just like you need to find a basketball team that can fill those different roles as well. So that really helped me at the beginning to realize I don't want to hire like four JLDs, people just like me. Like that'd be like having four point guards on a basketball team and it just wouldn't work. You know, we'd be short, we couldn't shoot and we wouldn't get any rebounds. Like that, that's not going to be a team that wins. But you know, if I am able to find people who excel where I'm bad at or I'm lacking, um, that's how I build the right team. So that's how I built my team when I was on fire was like really sitting down and identifying like what was my non-negotiables that like I was best at that I had to do and, you know, there's not, a, not that big of a list. And that was what I did every day, day in and day out. But then what's all the other things 
that, that I need to be done every single day to keep my business running and have it being uh, productive and successful. And then I found people to fill those roles that were good at those things because they liked doing those things. And like, that's a very tough challenge. And you know, it's going to take time to like hire and fire and rehire and do these things. But building the right team is super impactful. So right now people sometimes look at my business and they see that, you know, we're making millions of dollars a year and, you know, we have such a big audience and they, they just assume we have this huge team, but we don't. It's like myself, Kate, and three virtual assistants. Like that's it. That's our team because we are so well oiled and we didn't come here overnight, but, you know, we built this team over time. And, you know, there was a time like maybe three or four years ago where we were like, we're like at 12, you know, on our team and it was just a lot of fat. And so we had to cut that fat off and, and, and really identify, okay, this is the core team that we need. We can make it work like this. Cause sometimes, you know, just hiring people just to hire people just causes more work. So that was the thing I wanted to kind of mention about team. Was there anything else you want to talk about uh, in regards to that? No, huh? no, just, uh, cool. I love the translation and just how important. I think that's part of why even wanting to just chat randomly with people about sports is it's, it's just this community feeling of like, Oh yeah, we like all have life lessons through it, whether we think about time. it or not, it speaks to us. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And we will be sure to throw any links in anywhere you want people to follow you. Awesome. Thank you so much. EOFire.com is where all the magic happens. I enjoyed chatting today. Thanks. You too.